seven to three. Widener leading Case Western Reserve University here at halftime, getting ready for the start of the second half. And Ed, the stats certainly starting to sort of sway the way we expected with a lot of passing attack for both teams. I, I thought Case, though, would prefer to go more with a balanced attack, and they really have. 21 carries on the ground, 22 passes. So they're right in the middle. For Widener, I am a little surprised that they are as balanced as they are. 14 carries for 40 yards on the day, and they are 8 of 15 through the air for 98 yards. I'm surprised that in their 29 plays, they split right down the middle. This is a team that would prefer to throw it uh, probably twice or three times as much as they run the ball, and, and they're missing Steve Cook, who did not make the trip from Philadelphia. Ian Decker left midway through the second quarter with an injury. So uh, Case is doing what they want offensively and just not producing the results when they get into the red zone. Had the fumble by Dan Whalen. They cost him a few points. Had to settle for a field goal when they got inside the red zone before. So overall, I think Case is moving the ball up and down the field. The defense has adjusted to Widener and the speed uh, the offensive uh, presents from the pride. And uh, I, I expect Case to really kind of take command late in the third quarter here and win this football game. Well, as far as highlights in the first half, this was the Widener touchdown. As you saw, the quarterback, Matt Campbell, hook up with Mike Falkenstein. The catch and then the big run as he went in for six, his second receiving touchdown of the season. Extra point was good to make it seven to nothing. And this is the fumble, and Case had the ball inside the five-yard line. Whalen forced to scramble, lost the handle on it, and it was recovered by Keith Wilson of the Pride, and that snuffed out that Case scoring opportunity, which might have given them the lead had they been able to push it across. The lone points in the first half coming from Sam Coffey, who kicked a 24-yard field goal with 13.36 to go in the second quarter. So that is where we stand right now as we get ready for the start of quarter number three. Case came in, they were plus 16 on the turnover margin. Widener also plus 16. Widener has put the ball on the turf a couple of times. They fumbled a snap, they fumbled a punt, but have been able to jump back on it. Case with the lone turnover from Dan Whalen. Very penalty-free first half. Case not whistled for a penalty in the first two quarters. And just one offside penalty against Widener for five yards. It is starting to sprinkle a little bit here at Case Field. So uh, a little bit wet and damp out there right now on this very chilly day here in Cleveland, Ohio. There's the kick from Sam Coffey, and we are underway in the second half from the 15-yard line. This one returned. And slipping down, Kevin Fisher, who brought that one back close to 15 yards. And Widener will take over. They'll mark it at the 31. Matt Campbell will lead Widener onto the field. And Campbell only thrown the ball 15 times in the first half for Widener last week against Albright. Uh, 27 of 43 for 279 yards and three touchdowns. So. Again, Widener not afraid to put the ball in the air. In fact, probably more comfortable than running the ball. Just underway, five seconds gone by here in the third quarter. Ian Decker, who was shaken up on a play late in the first half, back in there right now. And he is hit and will have no gain on that play. No gain on the play. The Case defense just swarming to the football. They've played the run well all year, haven't really allowed teams to bust out or reach their average. In that case, Tom Brew and Jeff Brown really stuffed the middle along with Jake May at the nose guard. Second down and 10 for the Pride. They lead it 7-3. Driving ahead to the 35 as Ian Decker will pick up about three and a half yards on that run. Third down and long coming up for Widener. Boy, how many times have we said it this year? If you factor out a team's big plays, uh, the case defense is 
very, very effective. And if you take out the long pass play to Falkenstein in the first half, Case would be pitching a shutout. Yeah, the Case defense, they don't overreact. They stay in their lanes. This one up for grabs, picked off. Intercepted by the Spartans. That one grabbed by Mike Turcher, and he brings it back to the 30-yard line, Case football. For Case, that'll be the 18th interception by this defense this year. They've taken four back to the end zone, or two interceptions back to the end zone, and Kircher for a while there looked like he had a, a lane, but this ball was tipped initially. Hey, we keep it you back. went right off the receiver's hand, and Turcher was right there. Went off Jamie Childs' hands. He wasn't able to bring it in, and Turcher puts Case in business inside or near the 30-yard line. 12th interception this year thrown by Matt Campbell. And so the Spartans offense on the field. First and 10 from the Widener 31-yard line. 7-3, Widener leading it by four. Greg Meyer carrying the football, gets to the 30, and not much further as he hits the pile and gets driven back. Widener showed an eight men in the box stance there. And even as big as that case offensive line is, I don't know if they're going to be able to move eight out of the box to give Meyer a running lane. Uh, we got to stay behind that. Uh, thank you. Meyer had an opportunity maybe to cut it back, but just too many white shirts engulfed him. Second down and nine. Whalen, a quick throw to Mayer, and he is hit at the 30 and thrown down. Nice defensive play by Dan McDonald, the senior linebacker who grabbed Mayer and did not allow any gain on that play. Third down and nine as we see it again. And you see McDonald come in right there and grab Mayer. That may be the first time today that Widener is shut down. That little offset screen to the wide receiver. Third and nine, Case trying to take advantage of the turnover. Getting the interception by Mike Tercher. receivers checking the lone man in the backfield this went out for nicely and he just cannot hang on as he goes down to the turf trying to pursue that ball which was which was just a little bit out in front of him well and you have to believe now that they're in four down territory probably a little long for a Sam coffee kick after the incompletion but wow he almost John nicely almost made an amazing one-handed catch Well, it looks like they elect to go for it here on fourth and nine. It'd be a 47-yard field goal for Coffee. Fourth and nine, Whalen rolls out, looks downfield, fires it to the end zone, looking for nicely, and it's overthrown. And Widener will take over. So Widener dodges the bullet after the interception, and Case cannot capitalize on the turnover and they give it back on downs. Passing game there, the first series for Case just looked a little out of sync overall. Not really comfortable with what they wanted to do. Whalen not able to find an open receiver. That defensive secondary for Widener, very quick, very fast. But Dan Whalen's gonna have to make some better decisions here in the second half. So 12.06 to go here in the third quarter. Case field today, if you've joined us late, this is NCAA Division III keep playoff it, keep coverage. It, keep it. Campbell from the shotgun. Here comes Tom Brew, and he gets the pass off and pays the price. Boy, Matt Campbell threw that into a void. Question whether or not an eligible receiver was in there. Boy, Brew came after Matt Campbell and gave him a late push right there just as he let go of the ball. Football on the 30-yard line. Here come the pride to the line of scrimmage. They'll stack up four receivers, two on each side. Decker, the lone man in the backfield. Second down and 10 from the 30. Campbell throwing. It is caught out there. Not much gain. That one's grabbed by Tim Kilkenny. But Case there defensively. Jeff Brown, Brian Calderon. We talked about Case and the defense.
containing, holding their zones, not overreacting. And that's exactly what happened there. They just kind of squatted out in the flat, waited for Kilkenny to make a move, and then just swarmed around him. Calderon there for the tackle. 11 and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Third down. Here is Campbell throwing over the middle. Intended for Kevin Fisher, but Fisher not looking for the football. I don't know if he thought the ball was going to come over the top. It was thrown behind Fisher. Incomplete fourth down. Well, they had a mismatch. Fisher down the middle being covered by Tom Brute. Not exactly what Case wants. All-American linebacker deep into the secondary with Mike Peliak supporting over the top. Robert McHugh will punt this one away. Kick is on its way. And Gonsalves will catch it at the 30. Fumbles the football but holds on. And then he absorbs the hit by two defenders coming in on him. Kevin Franklin and Tim Schaub converged on Gonsalves as he was juggling that football. Just a little bit of a peek by Gonsalves as the ball comes down. You see him just turn his head enough as he heard footsteps and never really completely got a hold of the football. Case lucky to have it. Football will be marked at the 29-yard line. During that last series while the Case offense was on the bench, Greg Debelak had a few words for Dan Whalen before he set him back on the field. 7-3, Widener. First round of the Division III playoffs. Whalen back to throw. Being rushed. Looking to get rid of it downfield, and he just flips it out of bounds. Out of the pocket, he flips it out of bounds. Dave Natale is on the sidelines for us today. Dave, what do you have? And guys, just a couple of quick notes here as we start this third quarter. The wind and the rain have picked up considerably down here on the field, so that's certainly affecting the play. The one thing to consider, Widener coming into this game has allowed just 20 points in the third quarter. They're used to making adjustments, but so far, at least defensively, Case made the adjustments they've needed to make. Guys. Whalen will work at second and 10 now from the 29-yard line. As Dave mentioned, the rain coming down a little harder now. Here's Deitman carrying the football across the 40. And thrown down past midfield. Tackled by Zach Smith to keep him from going all the way to the end zone. Deitman picks up a huge gain of 22 yards. Bill Deitman, that's his longest carry of the year. 20, I think it'll be officially 23 yards from the 29 to the 48. 23-yard pickup. They do mark it up a yard to the 48. Case operating in Widener territory. Wayland did nicely and just caught before he has some running room. Orlando Brown holds down nicely. Orlando Brown, known as a pass defender, doesn't usually come up and play the run or the short passing game. Has eight interceptions, 14 pass defended on the year, but showing nice coverage. Open field tackling by Orlando Brown. Lisa Sala is in as the fullback, and Greg Meyer at tailback right now. Three receiver set. They go to Meyer, tries to duck through two defenders, and he does pick up some yards as he gets down to the 42. An off tackle play for Case today has been a little slow to develop. Whalen there with the handoff to Meyer and it shuffles his feet waiting for something to open up. The sprint draw or the sprint sweep has worked much better for Case today in picking up yardage in the running game. Well, that brings about a third down and five for Case so far today. Case four out of ten on third down conversions. Whalen to throw, and he drops the football, and it's recovered. Recovered by Widener. Now the man was down, 
That ball picked up by Keith Terlizzi, the senior defensive lineman out of Port Jefferson, New York. But Case turns it over, and Widener will take over after the fumble. Have to wonder how much the weather is becoming a factor. Dan Whalen pretty sure-handed this year, but we heard from Dave down on the sideline how the weather is kind of deteriorating a little bit here at Case Field, and the rain picking up. To wonder if Whalen's just getting his hand onto a wet football. There is a player shaking up for Widener over on the sideline. T.D. Davis. Keith Wilson came up behind Whalen and grabbed him by his jersey and sort of jolted Whalen, who didn't see Wilson, and that caused the ball to pop loose. There's the catch across the 48-yard line. They go to Michael Penna. The freshman tight end, 6'3", 230, out of Roman Catholic High School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Watch Penna throw just a quick little block and then come off the edge, find an opening in the middle, and then he took a shot from Tom Brew at the end. First and 10 from the Case 43-yard line. Back to throw. Campbell throws it just a bit out of the reach of Mike Falkenstein. Second down and 10 for Widener. Falkenstein was one on one with Bobby Bott on the weak side of the formation. Ball a little too high for Falkenstein to go up and get the ball. Falkenstein with four catches today for 66 yards, 38 of those on that. Touchdown reception. Second down and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. And Decker's tripped up. Decker tackled just inside the 40. So a third down facing Widener now with eight and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Couple of mistakes by Case. One inside the 10-yard line cost him an opportunity at points. Another one out near midfield as they were driving the football. The 10-0 Case Western Reserve University Spartans in Division Three playoff action today against Widener. Campbell firing far side of the field. It is caught for first down yardage. Jamie Shield. Shield hauls that one in. It's his second catch of the day, and they'll move the chains. Third down conversion for Widener, and the ball is marked at the Case 32-yard line. And Widener, for as much as they like to throw the football, and for the 25 passes they've thrown so far this afternoon, they have not really taken a shot downfield, Dave. Everything has been very much in that West Coast offense kind of feel underneath into the flat, quick slants. Case needs to make sure they don't get caught peeking. They'll hand this one to Andre Payton, who turns the corner, and he has good yardage as he gets down to the 25. Seven-yard pickup for Payton. Luis Gonsalves finally supplied the tackle. So Widener marching here following the fumble recovery. 7.38 to go in the third quarter. Right now, Widener with just 55 yards rushing. Second down and two. Campbell will be sacked. Brian Calderon wraps up Matt Campbell. And the sack will move him back close to the 30-yard line. Brian Calderon just bull rushed off the corner overpowered the left tackle, Michael Fagnani, and picked up the sack. Just ran right past him after a good initial move. So third down and seven as they lost five on the play. Third down play here for Case. Yeah, emotionally, this will be a big lift for Case if they can hold them on third down. 
converted a third down just a moment ago, and now they take a timeout. And they a didn't flag, get it off. Flag from the back judge. Now I saw Campbell motioning for the timeout. We'll see if he got it off in time as the officials will confer. It was very close. Let's see if they pick it up or if it's a delay of game penalty. Dead ball. Delay game. White. They did not get the playoff in time, so they will mark it back five more yards and a big break for Case there, Ed, as now they're looking at a third and 12. Third and 12 at the 35, but if you're Widener, you have to think that this is four down territory, much the same way Case did when they were at the Pride 30 yard line. So on third and 13, if you're planning offensively or defensively for Case, you've got to expect that they're going to go for it on fourth down. So maybe make sure you protect the underneath as well as the deep pass. Here's Campbell in the shotgun. Hit as he throws, tipped and incomplete. Calderon got to Campbell. Pass incomplete. And the punting unit will come on. Robert McHugh jogs out in case we'll get this one back. It is fourth and 12. And you notice that Luis Gonsalves gave the receiver a shot as soon as the ball was tipped. The interference is null and void at that pat time. And Luis Gonsalves made sure there wasn't going to be a rebound from Kevin Fisher. Here's the snap. And McHugh just does get it off. What a nice kick as he puts it all the way inside the five. It's down right there by Orlando Brown. So Case will be deep in their own territory. Offense will come out and inherit the football at the five yard line. Case has made a couple of mistakes. This is where they can't afford to make that mistake. Six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Seven to three, Widener. The Pride making one touchdown stand up so far today. Whalen playing with a sore knee. Gives it to Meyer. Meyer fights his way all the way out to the 10, so gives them some breathing room. Five yard pickup, second down and five. Meyer just got in behind that offensive line and was able to stretch ahead for five yards, not allow Widener really to get a good look at him where he was headed with the five yard pickup. Again, Case in a very good situation in second and five. Second down play, two receivers on the right for Whalen. He fakes the handoff, looks to go downfield. Now he'll run it and he has some daylight to the 20. Still on his feet and knocked out of bounds at the 28 yard line. And it's good to see Whalen pop back up after absorbing that hit as he was knocked out of bounds. Well, that was one of the things we talked about in the first half was the key to this game was keeping Dan Whalen healthy. Well, Whalen there makes the smart decision, finds the open seam with everybody downfield, but here steps back inside, tries to pick up some extra yards, takes a couple extra unnecessary hits. Well, that tells you a lot about Dan Whalen. He could have gone out of bounds at around the 20, and no one would have thought anything of it as Meyer carries. But he stayed inbounds, got eight extra yards, and took the hit. Meyer gets out to the 33. Five and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. Case started this drive on their own five. Five-yard pickup for Meyer again, second down and five. Nicely and Colasar lined up together on the left side. Nicely in the slot. High in the backfield. They'll go to Meyer. Meyer has a block, gets out across the 35. Picks up maybe three. So a third down is coming up now for the Spartans. But it's third and three, and this is a situation where you can use the athleticism of Dan Whalen. You can go back to maybe the tight end that we saw in his first catch of the year this this afternoon, DJ Suka. You can run that bubble screen that's worked so well, the delayed handoff and draw play to Bill Dyke, who's checked in the ballgame. Many, many options when you're at third and three. Suka is in the game now. 
on the left side. Raylan will hand it on a draw play yeah, to Deitman. And Deitman gets close to first down yardage here on third and two. Initially, the side judge had marked him up near the first down marker. But I think they're going to set him about a football, maybe a football and a half behind. Yeah, they will not even measure it here. Timeout might be called here or not. Let's see. They'll keep going. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. And it is fourth and one, and Calderon will have to punt. Back to receive it, Kevin Fisher. Calderon waits, low snap. He drops the football, but still gets it away. Not a lot of distance on this one. Fisher makes the catch and tries to run in stride. He's hit and dropped at the 50-yard line. Now there's a late flag on the field. It came off the sideline. Tom Zagorski with a little bit of emotion coming to the sideline. Have to see what the flag is. It's on the far side of the field, Dave. Sideline warning gets Widener. First down, this way. So the football marked at the 48-yard line of Widener. Here you see the hit coming up. Mike Turcher. But just a textbook tackle. That's what the flag came on for Widener coming off the bench. Justin Liepert ran into an official. He was trying to get onto the field, so they'll get a warning to stay back until the end of the play. Three and a half minutes to play now in the third quarter. Case down seven to three. Campbell throws over the middle. It's caught by Mike Penna, and he's rumbled out of bounds over there across the 45-yard line. Again, that underneath tight end drag play across the middle. Effective four, K or effective four Widener. Case has taken away the deep ball. But Widener just using that short underneath West Coast offense passing attack. And are nickel and diming themselves down the field. They lead it by four right now over the Spartans. Tom Brew coming on a blitz there. They hand it off to Andre Payton. And he is tackled by Brew. John T. Meyer in there on the coverage as well for Case. And they give Payton a couple of yards on that play. Third and short. But again, that run blitz very effective for Case. Forces the back to make decisions sooner than he wants to. Tom Brew held on for the tackle as the rest of the team came in to finish out. Here we go on third and one, and he dives to the pile. We'll see if he got first down yardage. From this point of view, I think he's a little bit short. If they mark it from the far side of the field, I still think he's going to be short, although that official is slightly ahead. See it on the replay. I believe that was Decker covering or carrying rather, and they are going to measure here to see where this play ended up. It was Decker, the ball carrier. Calderon got him. T. Meyer, T -Meyer came yeah. in. Jake May also pushing the pile back. As soon as we start going that away, Mike Pelliak coming up from his strong safety position. He is short. So K stops Widener. About a half a foot short of the first down. And Robert McHugh will check in to punt. And Case will again get it back after a defensive stand. Well, Case is going to get the football back, so this is where the, the punt rush for Case needs to be careful. Hold their position until the ball is snapped. You don't want to give Widener a first down on an offside penalty. Now we have two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. It was 7-3 to three at halftime. That's where we stand right now. 
There's the snap to McHugh, a nice kick, high spiraling kick, and Gonsalves asks for it, gets the fair catch. And again, Case pinned deep in their own territory, and they'll start it out on the 10-yard line. The last possession, Case moved from the five out near the 40-yard line. See if they can bring out that same kind of momentum. So far, Dan Whalen completing more than half his passes, 14 out of 27, 93 yards, no touchdowns. First and 10 from the 10 for Case. Whalen rolls to his left, looking to get rid of it. He finally does, and it's intercepted. Widener with the football, 15, 10, and a touchdown. John Mortarell. The senior cornerback out of Aston, PA, runs it back for a touchdown, and Widener extends the lead to 13-3. Like Whalen tried to force the ball in. Never saw Martell coming across, flashing out in front of him. Oh, there was a block in the back. Ryan Kolasar got pushed as he was pursuing from the backside. There's an injured player for Widener on the field. That's big James Woodley. Woodley rolled over on his hip and ankle. John Martorell Jr., the senior, comes up with a big return on the interception. Now Tom Lorich will try and kick it through for the extra point. 2.15 remains in the third quarter. Lorich, 5'11", senior, out of Westminster, PA. He kicks, and it is good. And it is a 14-3 Widener lead here in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout here back to Case Field for more football in just a moment. Widener on top, 14-3 in Cleveland. They wear the school colors for a few fleeting years, leave behind moments we'll always remember, and take with them the spirit to excel in all they do. That's why the NCAA Corporate Family provides scholarships, sponsors youth programs, and supports all 23 NCAA sports. They know that while the excitement of college sports is shown in moments, the value lasts a lifetime. Setting up for the kickoff here, Case will get it back, and now Ed trailing 14-3 following the interception return for a touchdown. It's their largest deficit of the year. They trailed by 10 at Carnegie Mellon in the second half, but they have not been down by 11 points all year. Here comes the kickoff from Lorich, and it will land out of bounds. So Case will end up taking over at the 30-yard line, I believe, or will they make them re-kick? We'll see. Like they want to re-kick. So they will kick it over again. Flag on the play is illegal procedure. Kick off out of bounds. 14 to 3 Widener. Playoff opener. Case in their first playoff appearance in school history. And Greg Devilak going to run, roll the dice a little bit here. Get himself a guaranteed starting position of the 35. Once again, See if it pays off for Case. Bot and Gonsalves to run this one back. Well, Lorich tees it up again. And here come the pride on the kickoff. This one will go to Gonsalves at the 13, across the 25, and he's upended at the 28-yard line. Well, the re-kick cost Case seven yards. Would have had the ball at the 35. 
Joe Amick is on the sideline with a special guest. Guys, I'm here with Dave Kalavik, uh, class of 05, wide receiver for the Spartans. And in the short times uh, since you graduated, could you talk about how, how much this program has grown? Oh, this is unbelievable. This is, I graduated, we, we were playing at Brush High School, and now we got this brand new facility. This was a big construction site when I was here, and this is just unbelievable facility, unbelievable locker rooms. And the team, I mean, the team's responding. Coach Dev is doing a great job. And uh, you have a business that you run that employs a lot of uh, people from Case, like Tom Brew. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, uh, yeah. He, he comes in at, um, part time. He comes and helps us out in the warehouse. I sell books on the internet. It's a good business. We started a couple years ago when I was in school, and it's just grown out from that. And I called Coach Debs up and said, I need some help in the warehouse. And he, he sends me guys. So it, it works out. It's a win win. And we good big football players lugging my books around. So. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Dave. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, gentlemen. 1.39 to go in the third quarter. You saw another near fumble. Whalen was able to keep possession of the football. It's back to the 20, and it's second down at 16 now. Fort Cates, quick out to Mayer. Running room to the 30, still on his feet. Tackled at the 35. You get the feeling, Dave, you watch this game, it feels like Case is really controlling the pace of the football game, that they they are the ones in control 14 to three. This play has been very effective for them all day, but it really has a, a reminisce feel back to Wash U a year ago in St. Louis where Case really felt like they controlled that game, but five turnovers, Dan Whalen had an off day, had some other fumble issues in that game a year maybe 13 months ago when Case came away with a 13 to seven loss. Same thing seems to be happening here today. Again to Mayer and he does get out of bounds across the 40 and that's good for a first down. 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. We'll see this one again. Good for first down yardage. You know overall Case is leading statistically in yards gain. They've They've outrushed Widener by nearly 50 yards. Thirty-two seconds to go in the third. They'll go to Deitman with it. He has been successful today on the ground. He gets across midfield into Widener territory as he runs down to the 48-yard line. That sprint draw from Bill Deitman again, very effective. Quick to the hole is Deitman. Gets the handoff and takes it straight ahead. The kind of offense that Bill Deitman ran last year at Mentor. That spread offense and he was a featured back. 48 yard line, the line of scrimmage. They'll go to Mayer with it again. They converge on him and this time he's not able to turn it upfield although he stays on his feet. And he's able to get a little bit of yardage out of that to the 46. He picks up two. That's the end of the third quarter. Final play of the third quarter goes to Mayer for a couple of yards. 14 to three, Widener leading it here at the end of three quarters. Case with some comeback to do in the fourth quarter. That's coming up next. I'm going to school with some of the smartest kids in the country. I'm a business major. Uh, engineering, physics major. Biology I major. I came here for basketball. I'm really interested in research. We're all destined for greatness. Cleveland's amazing. Cleveland does rock. The rock Hall is downtown. We got the art museum over here. Concerts, movies, dancing. We go downtown, yeah. we go to museums. Yeah, I would take a really hard look at Cleveland and I would take a hard look at Kate. This is the time. Fifteen minutes to go for Case to try and keep their undefeated season alive. They are 10-0, trailing by 11 points for the first time this year. And they have the football second down and eight from the 46-yard line of Widener. The Pride coming in with a record of eight and two, seven consecutive wins to close out the regular season. Dan Whalen's first collegiate game was against Oberlin right here at Case Field. He led Case back from an 11-point fourth-quarter deficit to force overtime, eventually getting the winning score, knocking off the Omen 29-23 in week one of the 06 season. 
Webster in motion. They'll hand to Deitman, picking his way forward, but they catch him from behind. He's hauled down by Dan McDonald, who has had a big day today for Widener. Al Case in third and six, possibly a long six, short seven. And this is a situation the Case wanted to avoid because now, for the most part, you've put yourself in a passing situation against a very quick ball hawking kind of defense that the Pride has on the field. 14-24 and counting. Just underway, fourth quarter. Whalen to throw. Webster makes the catch, turns it upfield, has the first down, and he's hauled down from behind by Zach Smith, but not before Webster runs for first down yardage. Brian Webster continues to show his value to this team is to convert third downs into first downs. And again, finds that opening on the short flat out on the sideline, turns it upfield, gets himself past the sticks, and continues the drive for Case. Webster, the 5'9 freshman out of Southfield, Michigan. Back to throw Whalen to Kolasar, puts his head down, gets yeah, close yeah, to the 26 four. yard yeah, line. Four. Nice toss by Whalen out to Kolasar, who works his way forward for about five yards. Case not yet in a situation where they have to panic against the clock, but they continue to use that no huddle offense to keep that same pride 11 on the field. High in the backfield with Sasala and Greg Meyer. Back to Meyer. Running across the 25, down to the 24. It'll be a third and short coming up for Case. Right, right now, it just seems like the plays offensively, looking at the rush play, seem to be opening up quicker with Bill Dykeman in the ballgame than Greg Meyer. Corey check and comes in, and four receivers check in. Two on each side for the Spartans. Case has all three of its timeouts to check in, and he will push his way forward across the 20, and he has the first down. Case back inside the red zone again. Corey check in. Just the power of Corey check in again. The pride looking for a pass. Case crossing him up with the draw play that's been very effective for them this afternoon. Meyer with some blocking. Down close to the 10. Meyer picks up eight yards as he is tackled on the 10-yard line. We see a replay of this. Watch the block by Lisa Sell getting out in front. Number 28 for Case, leading the way. Watch the block he throws. Right there. Key block opened up that play. So now it is second down and two from the Widener 10-yard line. Corey checking. Straight ahead, has the first down. It'll be first and goal Case. And for the first time today, a little bit of life on the Case cheering sections. The student section's coming to stand and salute what this offense has done here early in the fourth quarter. You know, Ed, that is the 18th first down of the game for Case. Widener has just eight. From the six, it's checking. And they stop him. But not before he picks up about three yards, and he really never goes down. He keeps moving, but you get into a situation where you're in the middle of the pile, and the whistle is a little late. But watch check and just lower his shoulder and move the pile. Now nobody down low on check so he can continue to drive with his legs. And he pushed the pile another three feet after he was stopped. It's on the two, checking, looking for the end zone. Touchdown.
checking. Well, when you need to break down the, the door, you might as well bring in your battering ram. 11th touchdown of the year for Corey Checkin, and that makes it 14 to nine. Case is gonna go for two, Dave. Well, there's really no reason not to go for two here. If you convert, a field goal can tie. If you don't, you still need a touchdown, even if you do kick the extra point. So Whalen will come in. They'll run this one from the left hash mark. And here's the two-point conversion play. Checkin is alone in the backfield. Whalen to Colasar, incomplete. I don't know if I like the play call or not. You need two points in this situation. Incomplete on the two-pointer, but Case gets their first touchdown of the day. 14-9, Widener. Back with more action in the fourth quarter in just a moment. For four years. I no longer wear pads. But I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. Well, Case has had some thrilling comebacks this season. One against Carnegie Mellon in their first conference game of the year. They erased a fourth quarter deficit. They'll try and do that today. Still plenty of time left. Sam Coffey with the end over end kick taken at the 15 yard line. Run back by Kevin Fisher. Gets out across the 30 and he's tackled. Ball comes loose. Let's see. It oh, is Widener football. Widener football. So the ball popped loose, Widener covers, and they will have it out uh, at the 35-yard line. Let's see a replay on that one and see if we can pick up when the ball comes loose here. He did knock it loose, but as they converged on it, it's hard to see who had a crack at it. Ball hit the white line. It was a loose ball until it got to the sideline. Up the middle. They will keep it in the hands of Ian Decker, who gets to the 40. Well, the defense has played well today, as has been the case every week of the 2007 season. Even if one big play touchdown, the other touchdown for Widener scoring on an interception return. And right now, the Sparks looking to their defensive unit to give them the ball back with a chance to march down the field and take the lead. Pate puts his head down. He's hit short of the first down. So it'll be third down and about one for Widener. Big play for the Case defense. Can they come up and play the run? Widener again only averages 83 yards on the ground. So running for a third and one is probably not their forte. So here comes the big third and one. High in the backfield. They will hand it to Decker, and he has the first down and more as he gets out to midfield. Off the tackle, whereas Case was expecting more something up the middle. Contained and pushed back. But Decker bouncing off ball care or off defenders. Is that Luis Gonzalez there first for Case? Not able to make the initial tackle. Blue got twisted around and Widener gets a new set of downs. Still in their own territory, the football at the 49. 14 to 9. Pride leading Case right now. Fisher in motion. Campbell to Decker. He's hit in the backfield and dropped. 
That hit may have been heard over at Severance Hall. That was a pounding hit from Mike Turcher. Turcher came in, made first contact. Calderon there as well. That's the second big hit Mike Turcher has had today. Had one on a kickoff return. 840 and counting here. 13 to 9 pride. Second down 11. To the air, Campbell hits his man. Caught by Tim Kilkenny, and he gets rolled out of bounds by Gonsalves. They pick up about five on that play. They'll mark it up to the 44-yard line. Again, Widener underneath. Nothing down the field. Another third down. Widener five out of 14 today on third down conversions. The Spartans need a stop here. On third down and three, back to throw Campbell, and it's caught again. Short. Tim Kilkenny makes the catch, He's and short. we'll see the spot. Screen pass to Kilkenny as he ran near the sideline. And it's going to be fourth down and short. That's a big time tackle. Mike Pelliak coming over. Great tackle. Did not allow Kilkenny to square those shoulders and forcing Widener to punt. Look at it. Gonsalves will await the punt from Rob McHugh. Here is the kick. Angling it near the far sideline. It'll Bounce, take a Widener bounce, and look at this. All the way inside the five. McHugh has done that all day today. Case will have the football, but pinned deep in their own territory with 7.36 to play here in the football game. 14 to nine, Widener. And McHugh on the season, that's the 25th time he's landed a punt inside the 20 yard line. Let's go, O. You see some of this crowd most bundled up on this chilly day here in Cleveland as they are rooting Case on in the school's first ever playoff appearance. From the three yard line, Whalen with checking in the backfield, three receivers. Whalen to throw, working in his own end zone, fires it downfield, nicely is open, he makes the catch. Now it's a foot race. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Spartans. 97 yards. 97 yard touchdown reception to Nicely. Sean Nicely came across the middle, and when he saw Dan Whalen in trouble, simply took off down the field. The defensive backs for Widener bit up, and Nicely had five steps in the defensive secondary when Whalen noticed him as he was rolling to his right. Now a 15 to 14 Spartans lead with 7.23 to go here in the fourth quarter. Whalen looking to the sideline and it looks like they will go for the two point conversion again. Longest offensive touchdown play in school history. That one goes for 97 yards. Whalen throwing from deep in his own end zone as he was scrambling. Here's the two point conversion play. Whalen to throw, and it's incomplete. Same play as they tried before, only to the opposite side, looking for Webster. So the PAT fails. 15 14, the Spartans assume a one point lead on the longest play from scrimmage in Case School history. Back in just a moment. They wear the school colors for a few fleeting years, leave behind moments we'll always remember, and take with them the spirit to excel in all they do. 
That's why the NCAA Corporate Family provides scholarships, sponsors youth programs, and supports all 23 NCAA sports. They know that while the excitement of college sports is shown in moments, the value lasts a lifetime. Fifteen to fourteen, Case Western Reserve now leading Widener PA. Case seated second in the region. Widener at number eight. And that's due to travel reasons, Steve. The number seven team is headed up to Wisconsin to take on Whitewater. And instead of sending Widener from Philadelphia all the way to Wisconsin, they allowed Mount uh, Capital to go up to Wisconsin instead. Here's the kickoff, and it'll be fielded at the 15-yard line by Mark Bandola. And Bandola with a good return out across the 35, close to the 38-yard line. Little history for everybody. The 97-yard pass play from Dan Whalen to Sean nicely tops the 96-yard pass play that happened in 1976 against Carnegie Mellon. Harry Williamson was the quarterback. Cliff Wilson was the receiver. And it went for 96 yards and a touchdown against the Tartans. So Sean nicely broke away when he saw Whalen in trouble, got behind the secondary, and hauled in the bomb from Dan Whalen. Campbell from the shotgun. Now Widener will try and answer, and this pass is caught out there. Boy, a sure-handed receiver, Tim Kilkenny. And he can make that catch on the run, looking back over his shoulder. And he makes the grab. And they pick up five, second down and five. Well, certainly the case coaching staff and sideline would feel a lot better with a three-point lead, but they'll take it with the one-point advantage right now and hope that this defense that has been outstanding today can hold up on this drive and get the ball back. Well, Widener's only thrown the ball for 134 yards, and they have just 64 on the ground. Defense done an excellent job all day today. Over the middle of the field, this is good for first down yardage as it's caught by Mike Falkenstein. You can feel the intensity of the, the case defense has picked up the hitting in the last five or six minutes there. Jeff Brown really laying the wood to Falkenstein as he comes across the middle. Barely holding on to the football is Falkenstein. Well, they do convert for the first down, first and 10 near midfield. Widener operating in their own territory at the 48-yard line. 15 to 14, Case leading it. 97-yard touchdown reception by Nicely. Campbell again to the sideline. This one overthrown. Intended for Penna, and that is incomplete second down. Campbell missed a chance to look down the field. Jamie Child was open. He had gotten a couple of steps in the defensive secondary. Instead, Campbell elected to go underneath. It was incomplete. And we continue to talk about it. Whatever adjustments the case defensive coaching staff has made, Widener simply has not been able to take the ball downfield on any of their pass plays this afternoon. Everything has been within about 10 or 12 yards of the line of scrimmage. 6.41 to play in the fourth quarter. Campbell fakes the handoff, looking downfield, hits a man in the middle of the field. This is Penna, and he is tripped up. Another little short crossing route, Ed, as they just try and get clumps of yardage with every play. Third Mike, down now for Widener. John T. Meyer, who is an outside linebacker by trade, when they come out in a four wide receiver set, drifts back into the secondary. And Meyer and Falkenstein got together on that last play. Downfield, which opened the void up in the middle for Penna. That time, Jeff Brown made the tackle on Penna. So a third down play here. Campbell to the air, and it is incomplete. Mike Pelyak on the coverage. Pass intended for Jamie Shield. And a fourth down and six as the defense holds again. Shield had to go up for the ball, ball well overthrown. He was lucky to get a hand on it, otherwise Peliak may have intercepted the pass. 
almost became a defender in that situation. Back to punt, Robert McHugh. Now Case will have an opportunity to get the ball and run some clock. Here is the kick. Another good punt. Gonsalves takes the extra or the uh, fair catch at the 14-yard line. 5.48 to play here in the fourth quarter. Case with the lead and the ball. And we talked about balance from Case in the beginning of the game. Case has 366 yards in total offense. That's 130 on the ground, 230 through the air. But the distribution is 39 rushes, 34 passes. And for Case, that's about where they'd like to be. Whalen now will try and move the ball upfield. 548. Showing on the clock a skinny one point lead right now. They go to Deitman and he cannot find any daylight through the line of scrimmage. Now, Deitman has had some success today, probably more so than any case running back. That time, they filled that hole quite well. And Deitman leading for 53. Leads the team with 53 yards on the ground for Case, 23 coming on one carry. 5.17 now. Well, if Greg Debelak could, he'd love to snap his fingers and take five minutes off that clock. Tightman again will be caught in the backfield. Nicely defended by Joe Fabinger. No Widener expecting run, they're getting run. They're putting eight or nine in the box. Case just not able to get a push. Indictment tracked down from behind. Third down and nine. Case desperately needs a first down. They did not want to see this drive stall out after three plays. 15-14 Case. Whalen throwing to the sideline for Nicely, who slipped and fell. And that brings about fourth down at nine. Maybe even more confusing at that is the clock stops. A running play would have used up at least another 40 seconds off the clock, got it under three minutes. Widener probably would have gotten the ball back with about three and a half to play in the game. Instead, they're gonna get it back at about 4.15 in case territory. Calderon will punt from his own goal line, and he'll have to hope for a good bounce here to get it beyond the 50. Here's the kick from Calderon, and it will be caught at the 49-yard line. Still on his feet, finally hauled down as Case converges on the play as Kevin Fisher worked hard for some running room, but Finally tackled at midfield, and so a short field now for Widener as they have a one-point deficit to try Andy Race. Tom Zagorski slow coming off the field. We'll go back and take a look at the uh, training table. Fifteen to fourteen, Case leading it by one. Heading down the home stretch in this win now, 4:08 to play. We're at Case Field in Cleveland, Division Three, first round playoff action. Decker to the 45, out across the 40, and a good start for Widener here as he peels off 10 yards. Four wide receiver set, Case looking pass, and Decker found some open running room on that straight sprint draw. You watch Decker take that hand up almost grabbing it with both hands rather than letting it sit into his gut. Defense will try and make another stand here. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Don't forget, a field goal will give Widener the lead. Campbell dumps it off to Decker, and he has room. Down to the 32-yard line, seven-yard pickup. Case coming on a blitz on that side of the field. Widener caught Case with too many men in their own backfield. Not enough to pursue the screenplay. There 
you see Decker running after the catch. Tercher and Calderon coming off the edge hard. Ball is on the 32. Widener marching downfield. This drive started at the 50. Campbell ready to go to the air again. Middle of the field, incomplete. Looking for Tim Kilkenny. Kilkenny again releasing from his tight end position, not lining up wide in the formation. That responsibility falling to the linebackers and strong safety Mike Peliak for coverage. Boy, Campbell looks very comfortable back there. He has done a nice job today. Campbell, 18 of 33, 155 yards, one touchdown. But again, 17 completions for less than 100 yards. Campbell back to throw again. Middle of the field, and it's caught inside the 20. Fisher makes the grab. Kevin He's coming Fisher on, on a blitz as Tom Brew just not able to get there. And Fisher found a soft spot in the zone about 15 yards downfield. Fisher has been returning punts today, makes his first catch of the football game. And right now, they are knocking on the door on the 19-yard line. This puts it in range for Tim Lorich. 12 of 17 on field goals, but as long just 35 yards on the season. They'll hand it to Decker. And he breaks over the right side. Gets down close to the 15. They mark him down on the 16-yard line. Widener started at the 50-yard line with about four minutes to go. And through some effective running, which you didn't really expect. Let's go, D! Again, Widener only averaging 83 yards on the ground. But today, they've had 75 yards, but very effective in this last drive. They've moved 34 yards on this drive. Football marked at the 16, second down and eight. Campbell throwing, and it's incomplete. That time, Kilkenny unable to make that catch as he runs toward the sideline. And a third down and eight now. At third and eight, do you expect him to go for a first down here or play it safe? And set up Lorich for a field goal attempt. I think at this point, Tim Lorich is going to get his opportunity to put the pride ahead. This one will probably be off tackle to the left, and Widener's going to take a timeout and find out what they want to do, probably determine which hash mark Lorich wants to kick from. 1.39 to go in the football game. 15 to 14 case. Back with the final 1.39 of this game coming up next. Stay with us. I'm going to school with some of the smartest kids in the country. I'm a business major. Uh, engineering, physics major. Biology I came major. came here for basketball. I'm really interested in research. We're all destined for greatness. Cleveland's amazing. Cleveland does rock. The rock Hall is downtown. We got the art museum over here. Concerts, movies, dancing. They go downtown, they go to museums. Yeah, I would take a really hard look at Cleveland, and I would take a hard look at Case. This is the time. There you see some of the students across the way in the dormitories here at the Village at 115. Looking on at this game. Fans all over the place here as you see some of the big crowd today watching the 10-0 Spartans. Well, third down and eight for Widener. Football marked on the 17-yard line. Case up by one point. Fisher in motion. Campbell firing to the end zone. It is caught, and it is going to be just short of the end zone as Falkenstein makes the catch on the one-yard line. 
16-yard pass to Falkenstein, who scored a touchdown earlier in the game. A little crossing pattern on the outside. Falkenstein comes to the inside. And you can see the case defenders looking to the outside. They were confused by the cross. Falkenstein had the opening. Down to the one-yard line, and Case has a timeout now. We'll keep it here during the timeout. So Case now looking at the need for a big-time goal line stand. And even if they are able to get it, Widener at the one-yard line with an opportunity to win this game with a field goal, or at least take the lead with a field goal. And Case, with just a minute 30 left, will not have much time to work with when they get the ball back. Probably under a minute before Dan Whalen will touch the football again. And after erasing an 11-point deficit here in the fourth quarter, the defense is forced to keep Widener from gaining two feet. First and goal from the one. Campbell to Decker, and he is in there for the touchdown. Widener takes the lead with 127 to play. It is now a 20 to 15 lead for the Widener Pride. Here late in the fourth quarter on a one yard run by Ian Decker. Just right off tackle, good lead block. And he got enough to get in the end zone. Widener will most likely go for two to make it a seven point ball game. They will go for the two point conversion. They put the ball down at the three yard line. So Ian Decker finishes off a 50 yard drive. One twenty-seven to go, and Widener asks for and gets a timeout. Now Case has two timeouts remaining. So once Case does get the ball back, they will have two timeouts to work with here in this final one twenty-seven. And just as we saw earlier, Ed Case, an explosive team. So anything is possible with quarterback such as Dan Whalen and as many offensive weapons as they have, but. Certainly a very tall order here with a very short clock to work with. Well, this two-point conversion is all important because from Case's perspective, a two-point conversion here puts them down by seven. If it's no good, they're down by five. Five, a touchdown would win it. If they go down by seven, they need a touchdown and extra point just to send it to overtime. Here comes the Pride now out of the huddle, ready for this two-point conversion play. Campbell approaches the line. Shield is out in the far corner. Campbell throwing, and that one is up over everybody's head. And out of bounds. Kilkenny lobbying for a flag, but none thrown. And now it's Case, 87 seconds, and one white line that separates them from the end of a perfect season and an opportunity to play next week. So the kickoff will be forthcoming. Case will look for a big return here to try and get them some decent field position. They've been successful on their kickoff returns today. Bobby Botts had a 49-yard return. Luis Gonsalves has found a couple of creases on his returns. Remember, Bobby Bott opened the game with that 49-yard return and put Case in Widener territory to start. So here we go, Lawrence will kick off. Bott and Gonsalves back deep. Near the 10 yard line. Now he is kicking into a stiff wind, Dave. Case will try and set up some blocking here. There's the kick. 
Gonsalves will have a chance to run this one back from the 13-yard line. Tries to turn it upfield. He's hit and knocked down at the 26-yard line. They lost six seconds on the return. 121 to play here in the fourth quarter. And Dan Whalen will come out. And the offense will have one final crack here to try and come up with a big time play. A touchdown, as Ed said, would give Case the lead. They set up four receivers, three on the left side. Check-in is the lone man in the backfield. Whalen back to throw. Mayer is open on the sideline. Whalen looking in the middle of the field. It's tipped and incomplete. Tipped by Shane Zumski. Second down and 10. Amazing. We've had 72 passes today and no penalties called either offensively or defensively in the passing game. Second down and 10, the football marked on the 27-yard line of Case. Spartans trailing it by 5, 20 to 15. Whalen to throw, goes to check in, and he drops the football as they try to go to check it out of the backfield. Third and 10 for Case. Widener is a 3-4 defense by base. But in the last two plays, they are bringing four on Dan Whalen, only dropping seven in the coverage. 112 now showing on the clock. Fourth quarter. Whalen to throw on third and 10. He'll try and run it. Now he wants to throw it, and it is incomplete. Webster diving, trying to get it. Fourth and 10 for Case, and this play is the season. Is the season for Case, 10 and 0 on the line. They need 10 yards to continue. Case does have two timeouts. I am a little surprised that all three plays for Case in this drive have been to the short side of the field and nothing extensively downfield. Widener with everybody within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. Here we go, fourth and 10. Whalen wings it downfield. It's caught by Nicely. Across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Oh, now that's cool under pressure. Nicely comes up grabbing his right leg. And that is not good news. He runs off now. Nicely out, Jordan Foley comes in. 56 seconds left, clock continues to move. First and 10 case to the sideline, they go with it. And Foley makes the catch and gets out of bounds at the 43 yard line. You can almost feel it. The energy came back to the stadium after Whalen completed that first down pass. All of a sudden, there seems to be a confidence, a swagger, just in the way the case got to the line of scrimmage on the last two plays. Two receivers on each side now. Colasar, Webster, Foley, and Mayer. Here's Whalen now. Another short route. Mayer makes the catch and gets out of bounds. So they get another first down as Mayer goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Looks like Sean Nicely's okay. He's back in the ball game. Nicely sets up in the slot. Webster and Colasar on the far side. Checking in the backfield. Whalen backs up. The Spartans looking for last second heroics. There's Mayer, and it's incomplete. He was open briefly. Dan Whalen's eyes got real big when he saw a miscommunication and a breakdown in the Widener secondary. Orlando Brown broke up. Zach Smith broke towards the middle, and for a moment, Mayer had himself a huge hole downfield, and Whalen just simply overthrew it. Second down and 10, 38 yard line, the line of scrimmage, 38 seconds left on the clock. Whalen directs traffic. 
Waylon to throw for the sideline and complete. Webster has that one go off his fingertips. That would not have gone for much yardage as it is, or as it was, so a third down and 10 for Case. They converted on fourth and 10 a moment ago. Sean nicely using a sure-handed receiver. Just right through his hands, it would have given Case another five yards. Third down and 10, Case conserving their two timeouts. Here's Whalen looking to throw downfield, steps up through the pocket. He's in trouble. He's tripped up. He goes down, and Case will have to use a timeout. That will be Case's second timeout of the half. They'll have one remaining, and a fourth down play will be coming up fourth and 13. Well, Case converted on fourth and 10. Take a look here at Dan Whalen. On his check downs, nowhere to go. He gets into a running mode and actually got run down from behind. It was Keith Wilson who came off the right defensive end position. As Widener continues to use a four down lineman set, something they haven't used most of the game. And coming out of a base 3-4 defense, only putting seven in the secondary. And it was Wilson, who's ordinarily an outside linebacker, came off the far edge and ran Whalen down on the near side of the field. Well, Case is ready. Widener comes out of their huddle. And a fourth down and 13 for Case, as they will try and get somebody open. They need to get to the 28-yard line for a first down. Football resting on the 41. Now a whistle blows, and Widener will take a timeout. Timeout, Widener. Widener takes a timeout, will step away as well. 27.8 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 20 to 15, Widener leading Case. We'll be back to Case Field after this. I'm going to school with some of the smartest kids in the country. I'm a business major. I'm an engineering physics major. Biology major. I came major. here for basketball. I'm really interested in research. We're all destined for greatness. Cleveland's amazing. Cleveland does rock. The rock halls downtown. We've got the art museum over here. Concerts, movies, dancing. We go downtown, we go to museums. Yeah, I would take a really hard look at Cleveland and I would take a hard look at Case. This is the time. Well, prayers going up for the 2,400 in attendance here today. 27 seconds left, and it's fourth and 13. Case needs a first down to keep their hopes alive of coming back in this game. Whalen, the sophomore, drops back to throw. He'll wing it downfield. Mayer makes the catch. Almost got away from the defender. Now he lands on the sideline and gets out of bounds. The second fourth down conversion of this drive. Waylon hurry him to the line. He wants to spike the football. As they set the clock. 19.6 seconds left and Waylon fires the football to the turf. They are on the 13 yard line with a first down, but only 17.5 seconds left. Case has probably three, maybe four plays left. And, uh, but they still can get a first down. They do and have one timeout. They can throw the ball over the middle of the field. Ryan Kolasar uncovered on the far side. They find Kolasar now. Colasar, Webster, Nicely, and Mayer are the receivers. Whalen to throw. Fires it for Webster. Diving grab inside the 10. 11 seconds. Now 10, and the timeout is called by Case. That's their final timeout. The football now resting on the seven yard line. Well, I guess if you're going to make your first appearance, in the postseason, you might as well make it a memorable game. As Case will have 
10 seconds to move seven yards. Back and take a look here at the last two completions from Dan Whalen. This one will be the one to Mayer on the fourth and 13. He almost broke it to get into the end zone, but they hauled him down. And this is the one to Webster on that grab. Nice job holding on to the football. That's Webster's favorite route. You can't say enough about the offensive line in this situation. Allowing Dan Whalen to set his feet in the pocket. All five of them up front. Marcus Kuzinski, Tom Zagorski, Brandon Jeffries, Ryan Brion, and Chris Center. They continue to give Dan Whalen the opportunity to move this team downfield. It is third down and four from the seven-yard line. Ten seconds to go. Whalen will back up and work from the shotgun. Again, four receivers in the game, trying to thread the needle, incomplete. Mayer at the goal line had to go through his fingertips. And again, fourth down and four. 6.9 seconds left on the clock. Now, if Case does not get in the end zone on this play, I think the time runs out. I don't think even if they stop it with the first down, by the time they reset the chains and spike the football, Case might be out of time. A touchdown will win it. Whalen to throw again. It is caught at the goal line, and it's a touchdown! Mayer with a touchdown with 2.4 seconds left. Jeff Mayer turned around after the catch, stuck the football over the goal line, and Case is taking a one-point lead. 21 to 20 with two seconds left. As improbable as it looked at the start of this drive, three fourth down conversions. And look at Jeff Mayer. Jeff Mayer catches it at the goal line, and the Spartans have taken the lead. Two point conversion here, check it is going to be stopped short of the goal line. So the one point lead will have to stand up for the final 2.4 seconds. What? Let's check the touchdown play, Ed, as we see the replay. Remember, this was a fourth and four. He sticks the ball out over the goal line, and he just did break the plane. But give Mayer credit for knowing where he was at to get it in the end zone. And again, you have to give credit to the offensive line. Those five guys up front allowed Dan Whalen to step into the pocket and make that throw to Jeff Mayer on the sideline. Jeff Mayer's first touchdown catch of the season. Got to remember, Dan Whalen had a comeback win in his first college game as a freshman here on campus back in September of 06. And he has done it again. His case has posted 18 points in the fourth quarter. And you know, Jeff Mayer, a great story, transferring from Baldwin Wallace. Missed two seasons after he tore his ACL. Coming back to play and making probably now the most famous catch ever in case football history. Yeah, not just a personal catch, not just probably the catch of the year, but when all is said and done, that may be the catch most remembered here on campus at Case Western. Three fourth down plays. So unless Widener has a Cal Stanford play, and we've seen it two weeks ago as Wash U put a scare into Case. Here's a bouncing ball. It'll be picked up by Fisher. They'll lateral. Out near the 35, another lateral hits the deck, and that's the ball game. The Case Western Reserve Spartans have won today 21 to 20 in a thrilling comeback in the final minute of this football game as they stun the Widener Pride. And Case lives on.
for week two of the playoffs next Saturday. 21 to 20, the final score as Case remains unbeaten at 11 and 0 on the season. This is difficult to believe what we just witnessed here at Case Field. Case entered the fourth quarter down by 11. Went ahead and then managed to put it all together in 87, on 87 seconds to move down the field from their own 26 yard line. And sure enough, Case put it in the end zone with Jeff Mayer. Dan Whalen stayed completely cool on that final drive. Showed no effects of what might have been a very pressure filled situation for a sophomore quarterback playing in front of a full house here at Case. We are going to have a lot of post game reaction for you coming up here on our post game show. Dave DiNatale is on the field right now as the players exchange congratulations with each other. Dave is there with a special guest. Dave. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, there's an NCAA rule that requires a 10 minute cooling off period for coaches and players. So while the guys are celebrating, we're going to find some people to talk to. Dr. Tom McLaughlin, physician emeritus here at Case. You've been here 34 years. How does this feel to see something like this today? This is just great. This is just great. I you know, you've been here for the ups and downs, the highs and lows of this football program. To see a playoff game first and foremost, and then this kind of game has to be special. Yes, it really was. This is, you know, this is really a exciting game. I've, my dad was a coach, so I've been on the sidelines for 70 or 68 years. So it's, uh, uh, but this this was one of the most exciting. No question about it. I imagine watching a young man like Jeff Mayer score a touchdown and all the things physically that he's had to go through yeah, as a team doctor, you know, and you're, you're practicing medicine and you're around these kids. That's got to feel great. It really does to see him, him with all the things he's had, all the injuries he's had to, to come back and be able to play like this. It's really great. Dr. McLaughlin, go enjoy the win with everybody else. We appreciate the time. All right, guys, we're going to try and find some more people in an interview. We throw it back up to you. 21 to 20, your final score. Case, a winner here today in NCAA Division III playoff action. They will await the winner of the Wabash Mount St. Joe game, and they will host that game next Saturday. Stay with us. We'll have much more coming up here from Case Field. More guests and post game reaction after this stunning win by Case. Stay with us back in just a moment. I was an offensive lineman for four years. I no longer wear pads, but I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. We welcome you back once again to Case Field, everybody. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty and Dave DiNatale on the sidelines. The Case Western Reserve Spartans heading for the locker room as they have won this game by a score of 21 to 20. And it's almost hard, Ed, to process everything that happened on that final drive. I think back to that diving catch by Brian Webster that helped keep that drive moving along so many things could have gone wrong during that drive and you look at three fourth down conversions that had to occur is this team charmed do you believe I don't know if they're charmed or they just simply believe that they're not going to lose I, I if you look at what how they came on the field with 87 seconds to play there was no hurriedness in them the offensive line 
didn't commit a penalty you expect if you're going to throw the ball downfield or if you think you got to protect your quarterback in the final minute that you reach out you grab a player none of that happened Whalen was smart enough to throw the ball away a couple of times when he had to his receivers cut breaks off or cut routes off when they had to and for the most part Case moved down the field but what was most impressive was completing the fourth and ten fourth and thirteen and then the fourth and four but Dave, as we were talking about, if Mayer doesn't get in the end zone, now the clock would stop with the timeout or the chains to set on the first down. But by the time they moved the ball to the middle of the field, allowed Whal started the clock, allowed Whalen to take the snap, spike the ball, they probably would have run out of the two seconds and not got another playoff. 21 to 20, your final. Let's take a look at the touchdown play again that ultimately won this game for Case as Jeff Mayer made the grab. Now remember this is a fourth down play. He makes the grab here. This is tackled, sticks the football over the plane of the goal line and that's a winner. 21 to 20. Case missed the extra point. Uh, the two point try but then on the final kick off return the Widener Pride unable to get the hook and ladder play rolling. And Case able to preserve a 21 to 20 win here today at Case Field. The crowd here today willing Case to a victory here today. And I thought you made a great point, Ed, earlier when uh, we talked about that fourth and 10 play, the first fourth down conversion. Uh, it seemed to energize the Spartans, and uh, all of a sudden they became that team that went 10-0. Right. They were. They came out. They seemed excited to come out and move the ball down the field. When the first three passes went incomplete, they were a little unsure of what they wanted to do on fourth down when they went and made that 15-yard completion over the middle. They hustled to the line, and with that, they seemed to have some energy. They ran the next play, and again, it just kind of, Took it to the next level, whereas they were they were ready, maybe a little confused due to the three straight incompletions, and then all of a sudden, just that one fourth down seemed to turn the momentum. We'll take a time out here. Dave Natale standing by. Hopefully, we can get some uh, guests for Dave to talk with about this game, and we'll take a time out. We'll be back with more. Again, the final there on your screen. Case wins 21-20 today in NCAA Division III playoff action. We'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to school with some of the smartest kids in the country. I'm a business major. Uh, engineering, physics major. Biology major. I came major. here for basketball. I'm really interested in research. We're all destined for greatness. Cleveland's amazing. Cleveland does rock. The rock halls downtown. We got the art museum over here. Concerts, movies, dancing. We go downtown, yeah. we go to museums. Yeah, I would take a really hard look at Cleveland and I would take a hard look at Case. This is the time. school scouts are out early today. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. Download the guide for college-bound students at ncaastudent.org. Back here at Case Field. Back here at Case Field, Ed Doherty alongside Dave Wilson as the Case Western Reserve University Spartans pull off a miracle and beat the Widener Pride 21-20 with a seven-yard touchdown pass from Dan Whalen to Jeff Mayer. Looking at some of the individual statistics for Case. For Case, on the ground, Case 134 yards. Dan Whalen, 26 of 48 for 306. So Case, 90 offensive plays, Dave, for 440 yards. On the other side of the ball, Widener with just 79 yards on the ground. 20 of 36 through the air was Matt Campbell for 183 yards. 
Both quarterbacks did throw an interception, but Case with a 200-yard advantage in yardage, five minutes in time of possession, and seven of 19 on third down, but more importantly, they were three of five on fourth down conversions. 21 to 20, your final score. Dave DiNatale is on the field with one of the emotional leaders of this team, Tom Zagorski. All right, Dave, thank you so much. Here with uh, offensive lineman Tom Zagorski. And uh, how are you feeling right now, big fella? Uh, words don't describe it. I'll tell you what. I mean, this is the greatest win I've ever been associated with in my entire life. And I've played in state championship games. I've played in games my whole life that have been big like this. But never have we been able, with a minute 25 or whatever it was, get after it with two timeouts and just go down the field, march down, take care of what we need to do. Danny did a great job. Receivers brought the ball in. And I, I, you can't ask for a better ending, I don't think. Especially on the way you guys executed on fourth downs. I mean, never any panic. You guys went out there, did your 111s, and, and executed. Yeah, I think there were three fourth downs we executed on and you know on that last drive and that's just awesome i mean we got what we needed to do i mean get done i mean there was a lot of times that uh they shoot throw a lot of guys in the box we were able to run the ball we had an 18 play drive early and i think that set the tone for the rest of the game it really set the tone they were gassing i mean that last that last drive i mean they were looking to the sideline wondering who's coming in for us who's coming in for us and that's something we advocate all the time we talk about i talk about my pregame speeches make them look to the sideline make them wonder who's coming in because they're afraid to go against us and that's exactly what happened today how about the, what can you say about the fans here today? Oh, awesome, awesome. I mean, from when I was a freshman, you know, back in 03, and we had Finnegan, we'd have 25 people there, to this is unbelievable. It's unparalleled. Great facility. The university is behind us, and it's awesome. It's a great feeling, and they, we finally got football fever in Northeast Ohio like it's supposed to be. No doubt. Tom, you guys move on next week and keep this thing going. It doesn't matter who you play. I know you guys could care less right now, but, but just talk about how, you know, this team. What is it about this team? It's just a never give up attitude. A never give up attitude. We knew, you know, we went 10 and 0, and we were like, you know, all the pressures off and everything. But you know, we talked about it once. You know, this is the first step on a five week journey for us, and that's our mindset right now. We got done what we needed to do. Let's get to that second week, take care of business, and whoever we play, they put in front of us. Hey, we'll beat them all all year. All we've heard about is we don't play the toughest schedule. But you know what? Hey, we've beaten everyone they put in front of us, and that's what we got to keep doing. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Take care. All right, that's time because Zagorski. We'll throw it back upstairs to you guys. All right, Dave, thanks very much. Tommy Zagorski, uh, not only a terrific football player, a terrific team spokesman, a future maybe in PR for Tom Zagorski, a great uh, young man and uh, outstanding job today, as you mentioned, Ed, with that entire offensive line, especially in the final drive, giving Dan Whalen time to operate, and it all culminates in a 21-20 win for Case. Overall, I'm very impressed not only with the, with the line play, but just the, the way the, the reserve receivers like Jeff Mayer stepped in without Tim Cowdrick, without uh, Sean Nicely for a few plays. The depth on offense, very impressive for Case. Well, that's it for today's coverage. We certainly hope you enjoyed our telecast today. 21 to 20, the final score. Monitor case.edu for information about next week's round two game, which will be played right here at Case Field next Saturday afternoon. For all of our crew, and for my partner, Ed Doherty, David Wilson saying goodbye from Cleveland, Ohio. Again, the final score in round one of the playoffs, Case 21, Widener 20. <laughs>